It was a big day of news on Capitol Hill today. There were major developments in the government funding fight, as well as Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He surprised us all on Capitol Hill, saying he will step aside from his leadership post this fall. To serve Kentucky in the Senate has been the honor of my life. To lead my Republican colleagues has been the highest privilege. But one of life's most underappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next chapter. And this comes the day after former President Trump won yet another primary in Michigan last night. McConnell has still not endorsed Trump for a second term. On all three senators seen as the most likely to succeed him have, the most recent being Senator John Thune earlier this week. All of this while lawmakers face another government shutdown deadline this weekend. A lot to discuss. CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa joins us now to discuss. Thanks so much for being here, Bob. I know there's a lot of breaking news today, but I do want to talk about McConnell because while this has been something that people have been speculating about for a while now, the fact that he is deciding to step down this fall from this leadership position, um, what does that say? Uh, what kind of message does this send as we're trying to assess where the Republican Party is right now as Donald Trump appears poised to become the nominee? Caitlin, always good to be with you, and uh, thanks for your collegiality today, helping yeah, us all out with us. We're, we're all busy here at Swapping CBS. Swapping seats here. <laughs> well, this is a seismic moment for the Republican Party. Mitch McConnell has been uh, the leader for so many years, but he's not just the leader in terms of the official position. He's the leader of a value system inside of the Republican mm. Party. Traditional Republican values, traditional conservatism. He has become, in a sense, an avatar for that wing of the party. And now with his move toward the exits, you're seeing the Trump wing of the party take almost total control of the congressional ranks of the party, as well as, of course, on the campaign trail. Yeah, I was thinking a lot about that in terms of the policy that they're discussing now and what they're trying to put forward, especially when it comes to Ukraine funding, for example. I mean, he was kind of, uh, you know, the part of this this relic of, of the Republican Party in terms of that. Um, I'm wondering, you know, what kind of impact that will have, especially as as Trump is pushing a different message. I've covered Senator McConnell for over a decade. And what's notable to me is that he's really a creature of the Senate. Mm. Not only is he a United States senator and a Senate leader, he began his career as an intern mm. in the Senate in the 1960s. And he was an mm. intern. Uh, he worked alongside uh, the former senator, Lamar Alexander. They mm. became close friends. So he is someone who has believed in the Republican Party over the years and has been through all of its evolutions. Uh, during Watergate, he notably broke with Richard Nixon to an extent. He was not exactly an enthusiast for Nixon during Watergate, which was notable. Mm -hmm. But he has become someone who is such a, as you said so well, uh, an advocate for the U.S. presence in the world, mm -hmm. for what many would call a muscular, traditional Republican foreign policy, where Republicans mm -hmm. would advocate to have a major U.S. presence in Europe, in mm -hmm. other continents around the world, instead of pulling back in that Trumpian fashion, America first, Trump calls his view of the world. And McConnell has always been a counter to Trump on a lot of these foreign policy questions, but he's accepted that the parties embrace Trump and he's tried to live mm -hmm. almost like sometimes when a couple gets divorced and they still mm -hmm. live in the same house for some time as things are settled. <laughs> that This has been a divorce for some time. McConnell mm -hmm. and Trump have not really spoken since December of 2020, mm -hmm. yet they've tried to have a functioning relationship to a point politically. Mm -hmm. uh, but McConnell now is at in the later stage of his career and he's He's saying it's time for a new generation. Yeah, I think that's such an apt um, uh, metaphor here. And if we could kind of follow this through, it, it seems like, and as we've witnessed over the course of the past several weeks in the Republican primary, lawmakers have coalesced around Donald Trump and have been acknowledging that this is the marriage that they have to keep going at this point. I mean, I think it was really interesting that John Thune, uh, the number two in leadership, endorsed Donald Trump this week. Um, we are not yet sure about what the succession plan will look like. And of course, um, senators will have to make that decision. Um, but what does that tell you about those vying to become the next leader of the Senate, uh, the leader of the Republicans in the Senate? Well, you can see on screen there, Senate, the, the Johns. The Johns, yeah. Uh, Thune is someone who's widely popular in the conference. Uh, Barrasso is seen as someone who's popular as well, more on the policy side. And Cornyn from Texas, 
He has his supporters. I think it's going to be a pretty competitive race. But the real question is, you look at what happened now uh, with this government funding bill. Mm -hmm. They have an agreement to try to keep the negotiations going while the government remains open. They're going to stagger some of the appropriations. Some will go mm. through March 8th. Some mm. will then go, be, uh, go through late March. So you see Speaker Johnson under so much pressure to do what the Trump rank and file want him to do. And so they've averted a government shutdown now. Uh, in this new statement out tonight, they say negotiators have come to an agreement, six bills, uh, across the appropriations that will make sure that the government remains funded, but it allows Speaker Johnson to still try to get what he wants on border security. And all of these government funding discussions are really indicative of what the Senate's going to face post McConnell. Mm. You're going to have a Trump group that wants what Trump wants done. How will they handle it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something that McConnell was very used to navigating. We'll see how uh, his successor does that eventually. Bob Costa, always good to see you. Thanks Thank you. so much for that analysis.